Hello, in this video we're going to uh, find the distribution of a quadratic form where x is a, is a multivariate normal random variable. So let's let xi be multivariate normal with dimensions p, mean vector mu, and variance covariance matrix sigma. Uh, I goes from 1 to n and, we're, and for this video we're going to assume that we know the variance covariance matrix. So let's let x bar equal the sum of these vectors divided by n. So there's n vectors. Um, so it's a sample mean. But and so this x bar throughout the throughout this whole video will be a vector. Now the um, since x bar is a linear combination of normal random variables, it itself is a normal it's distributed normally so let's find its mean and variance covariance matrix so the expected value of x bar you know so you plug this in and that expectation goes through the summation sign and uh, the mean of each one of those xi uh, vectors is mu uh, mu so this is a constant come and come out front so there's n of those and then the n's cancel we're just left with the uh, mu. Now the variance of x bar, when you stick this in, the constant comes out front squared, so it's 1 over n squared, and the uh, variance operator can, can be taken inside the sigma. They're independent, the xi's are independent, so there's no, you know, there's no covariance between them. Um, the variance of each xi is sigma and it's constant so there's n of those so this is n sigma so one of the sigmas cancels and we're left with 1 over n sigma which is often written as sigma sub x bar so this this is the variance covariance of x bar so that means x bar is multivariate normal with mean mu and variance covariance matrix sigma over n and since it's multivariate normal, f of x bar can be written like this in multivariate normal form. And this is sigma inverse. So this n right here can be thought of as sigma over n inverse. But the n is a constant, so it can be taken out front. But the inverse of 1 over n is n. And that's where we get, that's why it goes to the numerator here. And this is uh, the determinant uh, ratio to the one half power, p minus p over two. So now, uh, two notes before we go, you know, go to the next page, is I have a video called "Generating Functions for a Gamma Distribution," and in this video, we derive the uh, moment generating function for a gamma distribution, which is this: it's one minus beta times t raised to the minus alpha. But since a chi-squared distribution is a gamma, then we know that we get, by default, the chi-squared distribution with alpha degrees of freedom would be 1 minus 2t raised to the alpha to the minus alpha over 2. So we're we, we're going to use this, or we, we're going to need to remember this moment generating function. And, and again, it's derived in that video there. So now we want to find the distribution of this quadratic form. But since this is sigma over n to the inverse, it's, you, the n can be taken out inverse, which means to take it to the numerator in this. So this is what we want to find. So let's look at the moment generating function of y. And that's the expected value of e to the ty. But now when we plug in what y is, which is this, so we, we take that y and put this quadratic form in. Now this is an expectation, and, and the variable is x bar. So we can use lotus uh, 
the law of the unconscious statistician and then use the, di the density for X bar. So then this expectation is the integral of, you know, E to this, which is this piece here, times the density of X bar, which we determined was a normal density, multivariate normal density. And this is D X bar. Now this is a vector. So that's why there's, there's going to be P of those. Well, next, we, the, the exponents on the E, since it's multiplication, it's essentially adding these two. So what we do is this constant is brought out. This is brought here. Now, what we do, what I do is I, I skip a step. So I factor out a minus one half here. But there's no minus one half here. So to factor out a minus one half, I have to I have to take it also times a minus 2 in here. So I factor this out, and then this piece here, I factor out. And on the back side, I factor out this vector. So what's left is n times, n times sigma inverse. So if we were to multiply that n in. And over here, we're left with uh, minus 2 times tn sigma inverse, which is this piece. So if you were to multiply that in, you'd get it back. So now, what we do in cases like this, what I like to do is to, to trick this or manipulate it into a known density, and then it be, integration becomes quite easy. So this kind of looks like a normal density. So this piece here, if we take out front, we're left with this. Now, this sort of looks like, you know, the original sigma, you know, the variance covariance matrix. So if we divided by the inverse of this, the, let me rephrase that, the square root of the determinant of this, you know, we divided by, then we'd have to, of course, multiply it. Then this integral becomes one. And so in the interest of, of space, I skipped a step. So this piece is taken out front. That's what this piece is. Then I multiply and divide by this quantity. So here in the brackets is this. But we have to inverse it. And then we take the determinant and to the 1 half power. Now this is in the numerator. So to make it in the denominator, we also have to divide by it. Then this integral integrates to 1. Now we start simplifying this. The de this is the determinant. So in a sense, if we, we could put parentheses around this and to bring out a one over n, we, there's, we'd have, there'd be p of those, right? But then to take it out of the minus one half, then you have to times it times minus one half. So that's where this, 1 over minus p to the 1 half comes from. And what's left is the determinant of sigma raised to the minus 1 half power. Now this piece here, so notice that this n is in the square brackets to the minus 1 half. So if we want to bring this out, we have to take it to the minus 1 half, which means 1 over n. And that, but we're still inside the determinant. Now bring in, out the determinant but still inside to the one half, it's going to be uh, one over n to the pth power. But then we take it out of the minus one half means take it times one half. So this n becomes this, and what's on inside, we kind of right factor out a sigma inverse, and then what's left is one minus two t sigma inverse. So now this right here same base we just add exponents but that goes to zero so that goes to one essentially goes away now this uh, one minus two t times this and it's inside this determinant means when we can take it out of the determinant but of course inside that one half power so it becomes this raised to the pth power oh but it's inverse so it's minus that raised to the pth power but then you have to to get it outside this one half, you, you take it times one half, so that this becomes this piece. So what's left over is the minus, 
sigma inverse to the inverse to the determinant to the one half and then this is this so sigma inverse inverse is just sigma so it's the determinant of sigma to the one half times the determinant of sigma to the minus one half so you add exponents that goes to one the exponent goes to zero which makes it go to one so we're left with just this but that was the moment generating function of a chi-square with p degrees of freedom so that implies that y is distributed with chi degrees of freedom because of the uniqueness theorem of moment generating functions all right well that's all i have for today hopefully you enjoyed that i sure did uh, please like the video and subscribe so you don't miss the next one thanks bye